of the meeting of the maybe the last meeting before public works to order. Um, first, for approval, the minutes of the October 22nd Board of Public Works meeting. Mike, I heard that you're the only one that has seen it, actually. Let's see it. Oh, I see it. You yeah. saw it, too? Yeah. Okay, do it. So move. Uh, yeah, move approval. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Wasn't here. Oh. Oh. No wonder it was so easy for you to correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have any public comment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And but you're here also for the um, private ways. Private ways. But, correct. Sure, so do you sure. want to wait till that? Sure. Yeah, Motion to take item number two under old business out of order. Uh, How about? Yes. New so business for yeah for B. Oh, okay. For for a, all right, for I was a, yeah. Well, yeah. it's in well, choice. It is. <laughs> Which one would we like to call it? I'd um, like to yeah. make a motion that we take uh, item number 4A out of order. Second. All right. Yes. Um, so in front of you, you have a 11 by 17 drawing that has various numbers and configurations of Bottoms Road that were laid out by staff and one were approved by the Board of Public Works. So item one was the first iteration that staff had done at one of the last board meetings. Item number two, the turnaround which is here, is what you recommended to move forward with. Since then I've been approached by uh, Mr. Reardon and Harry Brickman on this Item 3-4, which I assumed anywhere in the Jackson property would have been fine. There's a actually a woods road here at number 3, which would be a very convenient place to do it. Mm -hmm. And what I found out later is that the Reardons um, wanted it moved back even further to be adjacent to Mr. Jackson's property so that it doesn't create frontage on um, this large parcel that goes up behind Meadow. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for some advice how the board wants to move forward with this particular private way. Um, season's getting short, and city council needs to finalize this. And what's the difference between three and four again? Uh, the turnarounds on different properties. One is an abutter who actually lives on or off of Bottoms Road with a right of way, mm -hmm. and the other one is a person who lives in High Meadow who doesn't have any access to this lot off of Bottoms Road, correct? Correct. Okay. Actually, if, if, if I could well, say something. Hold on just a moment. Okay. Um, so, if we look at option four, mm -hmm. um, does that provide access to the driveway for the property on the opposite side of the road? That is right on the edge of the driveway. Mr. Jackson would have to take care of his own driveway as he normally has done. Right. But that's where our plow truck would turn around and so number four is right on the edge of his driveway opposite the street. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering why we would uh, uh, has have uh, in terms of input, have we received input from um, Karen Sinowitz with respect to her losing a uh, losing the furniture for a lot on bottom Road? I have not heard from her. I have not approached well, I think that's a question that probably you ought to be made aware of. Or that's usually I, 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 think, I think our goal in dealing with these unusual private way approvals um, was to uh, maintain access to existing properties, developed properties. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't have many examples where we tried to, uh, where we were concerned about um, creating a developable lot from a condition that's not developable at the moment. But I, I don't think that that was never our intent was to open up lots for development by creating a public way. Yeah, well, I understand that, but I thought I heard as part of Ned's explanation that Mr. Reardon had said something with, uh, with respect to the fundage that would be that uh, uh, on the Sinowitz lot? It would provide fundage, I'm not sure if it provides enough fundage for a building lot. It would definitely right. provide number three and two and one would all provide fundage, fundage along that, that particular lot. 
So the difference is item four does not. That's yes. correct. Yeah. Uh, is uh, James Ferrara okay with this? I haven't posted him yet. This was done over the past day and a half. Okay. Any more questions from the board? I just need to make sure I'm understanding. So we're we're suggesting through number four that the that the um, that the street acceptance would go uh, to the where the red line is drawn on Bottoms Road uh, on the Ferrera property. That's correct. And that would be the end of the approved. Except in, except that is, that is yeah. at the request of um, the property owners who own Bottoms Road and live up there. Yes. Except that we haven't talked to all of them. Um, no, because we never intended it to be that short of a road. We always intended it to be mm -hmm. somewhere up here right. for a turnaround. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure what the hurry is here. If we're, if we're, if we're going to be making some changes which are contrary to what was originally proposed by, by this board, then maybe we ought to just, you know, take another. <laughs> we're, or official or not official at that point, someone ought to take uh, uh, the, the opportunity to contact all of the uh, abutters to let them decide how they feel about how it's affecting what funders they have or do not have. All the abutters? Well, only abutters on this street. There's only about five of them, I think. Is that's it? correct. So, I mean, that's fairly straightforward. And then they should just understand what, what's involved and what might be lost or gained. Any more comments from the board? Okay. Oh, hi. Um, I'm Tom Reagan, by the way, and this is Harriet Brickman. And uh, we've been sort of going back and forth on this whole process for quite a long time now, I think, right, in the last year or two. Um, and we're trying to figure out a way to resolve it that addresses, I think, the board's issues, which is basically what part of the road is for common usage as opposed to, to private driveways. Um, and um, I'm trying to, I'm, actually I'm not gonna make a good, good case here. We, we were hoping to have our attorney make a presentation that would make more sense at Etheridge, um, but he had a conflict. So I'll do my best to try and explain what our position is. And that is primarily that in, in agreement with what the city is saying, they only wanted to take the road that was in common usage, then limit it to what is currently in common usage for the existing residences there, rather than open up, I think Pat mentioned the, the opening up developable land uh, by, by creating frontage for parties who have no frontage um, or have any right to use the road even at this point. Um, there is only one right of way and that goes with Ray and Diane there's a sort of common usage Jackson right property. away, the Jackson property, which is on the, uh, what is it, east side of the road. And then uh, the other one um, with Jim and Lydia Ferreira. Uh, Ferreira, they have, a, I guess, a common usage right of way to go there that no one's going to try and stop them from doing it. But at that point, they're only, currently there are three residences on the road. And so when we looked at the, the thing saying, okay, the proposal we gave to Ned was to say, okay, the road is being used by the Jacksons and by the Ferreras and by us, and that just that area of the road that is in common usage, you know, the city is saying that's all they want to take over. And so mm -hmm. we've tried to come up with the best way of minimal impact by having just a turnaround at the at the end of that common usage area. And when originally when I had presented a, a drawing to Ned, I blocked out an area that for probably sort of convenience issues was in between these two, between C, between three and four, which happened to sort of drop onto what, three property lines, but all three of which were basically the edge and scrub land. And um, I had to, actually I made, not the fancy printouts, but I made printouts of what our original proposal was and just, um, you know, if you want to pass it around. I was also um, trying to make it uh, make it a huge project for the DPW to make a turn around right. up there. Right. Yeah, right. and that's a that is an issue because there is there's an old tree that's falling down right. anyhow, right at that, that same area. There's maybe two other oaks or something, uh, but the rest of it's all just scrub. Mm -hmm. you know, the trees that have all that have all been sort of volunteer trees. Yes. And, you know, nothing intended or or landscaping. Um, but the issue of where Ned's, uh, not where, uh, where the Jackson driveway would be accessed, I think it's important to make sure that he doesn't complain about, oh, that stops short of his driveway. 
So that's why we drew it up the way we did. Right, if, it were, if it were to go shorter than that, and, and he was fine with that. But he still has a deeded right of way right. on yes. the on yep. past. If that number four was going to be the turnaround, he still have a right of passage past that okay. length right. of his property. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yep. it wouldn't be plowed. Is that right? That's right. right. Plowed up to his driveway and stopped. Up basically. to his driveway? So he okay. could, we would clear to his driveway? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. Who signed the application to, to ask for um, the private way? designation. Uh, this came in from the abutters of Bottom Road, I believe. There was a petition that, that Jim Ferrara started. Right. Okay, I'm just right. w wanting to know that all these people did sign the petition? I there can were, go there get were it. ten mm -hmm. signatures. Um, uh, I, I I was one of them, although I was I signed it reluctantly because I wanted I wanted the Bottoms Road to have been defined before I signed it, but that wasn't going to be possible. I just wanted to know what we were talking about, you know, yeah. which which length um, to have this discussion actually in advance of that, but that's not how it worked out. There's no requirement right. that it be the abutters, any residents, right? Yeah. No, I was just trying yes. to get who would have known all, about it. I believe all the residents I think on the road had signed it once. And their kids. Jim I think Lydia it was, it was and Ray and, Ray and, Ray and Diane, Diane and, and me, and I think uh, their kids. Yeah, Everybody's so a voting age Pretty now. much everyone yeah. says, yeah, they want the road to be a public right. way. M Mike is ahead of you, unless this is direct response to it. Yeah, it wasn't a, a resident, or a, I actually a, a developed one from DPW like we did for a lot of others, just make right. this move along. Yes, because this was a, they came back. Came back. Mm -hmm. Can the turnaround be on the Jackson property in their driveway? I wouldn't want to plow his driveway and have a turnaround in his driveway. It's only a two car width driveway. And if I believe, if I remember correctly, the land drops off from the road into his property versus the south side of the road is fairly flat. Okay. So the issue on the table, as I understand it, is that we want to make sure that um, Ferrara is, is in agreement with this turnaround. Everybody comfortable with that? Or is that all the abutters is comfortable with it? All the abutters. I, I think it's just for hers and Jackson's at this point. Yeah. Well, it is, I guess. What about have, Star? And she has access from Clement Street with oh, the driveway. Right. Yeah. The driveway that comes up along Kelly's? Is that yes. the same one? Yeah. Yep. Kelly's? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, um, I mean, if it, I think all, of it, all we're talking about is one of Butter who has not been made aware of this. Am I correct? That would be correct in. Uh, Karen has not. Karen. Right, that's the one I'm talking about. Okay. Here. So I'm just, I'm just wondering. There hasn't been approached that they have a potential yeah. turnaround in their property. They have. They have. They have. They have. They have not. They have not. Yeah. Okay, that's what I understood. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a little amused by this because the only way that we knew that the turnaround, the first, the first idea of a turnaround was at the bottom of our field was because I saw a surveyor there. Nobody let us know. And the surveyor <laughs> didn't even mention it to us. He was out there. I just went down to see what somebody was doing in the in field. Our, in our front fields. And you know, so it was sort of a little surprising to us. It's like, oh, this is moving along, but we don't have a clue what's going on. So well, that's what surprised anybody yeah, else. Yeah, 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 just let them know. And then told us what was going on. <laughs> about everything. I, I, do have, I do want to say that. So we will next talk to Karen and Ted, James Ferrara. And, and, and the Jacksons. And the Jacksons. Yep. Yeah. And can you bring well, it back to I have a question. Before? Theoretically, if we talked to Karen uh, Kasinowicz and they said we'd love to have that frontage, yeah. what would you do? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I would not be in favor of talking to the Kasinowitzes. How I mean, my, my position is we should only go so far as to serve the existing driveways. As long as we're able, able to defend the, the fact that we've changed from one to two to three to four exactly. uh, over the course of time here. I mean, that's a, that's a logical question for a, a resident to ask under the circumstances. We've got to be able to answer that question appropriately rather than create a problem for ourselves. Ask them. That's what so I think. Just so one and three were from department staff. Mm -hmm. Two was a recommendation from the board. Four, there's been no recommendation on. Right, so it's been a lot of discussion, and it's just mm -hmm. the kind of thing that is involved. That concentrated area there, three or four people have 
been participating in that discussion to some extent. The fourth one, it seems to me, should be reasonably contacted under the circumstances. And if they ask that question, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did, then I think we need to just have an answer for that. Of course, the issue is moved after tonight. It is. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. And by the way, the frontage then would extend not just uh, um, to users of the road, it would also extend to, uh, who's, who's, who's this property up on the hill now? And this is Star. This the is star, Kelly. The Star and the Kelly would also gain frontage from this, even mm -hmm. though they're not users of the road. Well, I think there's is there a consensus among the board that we are comfortable going ahead with the board as long as you talk to Ferrara and talk mm -hmm. and make sure that that's okay? Everybody? Well, yeah, because I think either whether you do three or four means a land taking or an easement or something. Who would be an easement? An easement. So the, the actual um, public way would be 50 feet wide, and then there would be this place really to stow snow. Um, Store mm -hmm. snow and turn around the truck. That's correct. That additional uh, 50 by 50 foot area. So, Ned, can you ask that answer um, a question that's related to that, which is if it's an easement to that, is it an easement over Bottoms Road or is it a taking of Bottoms Road itself? It is, a, it is an easement until the city reverts it back to the owners. So, it's basically a permanent easement for the city to be on and the public. So, we would still own the road then? Until the, you would not own the road, the city would own it until we reverted ownership back. Oh, uh, my was understanding was easements were the use of the property, but the, pro the underlying property still the underlying is property owned you know, by the, the, the person. That's correct. Right. Okay. So it's been discontinued. The property is re reverted to the abutters on either side of the. Of well, the in this case, road. they're not abutters. In this case, the road is owned by one person, or by one by, by one parcel. It's not like uh, you know a lot of the town roads go in between two properties. Mm -hmm. In this case, the road is going in on the property. Right. And so you are the sole ownership of the roadway. Right. Correct. And that right. will continue. I, I there's been some confusion about that, that's this. That's confusing to me. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's why I was asking because I, yeah. I don't I, I have an answer. The, the, when you talked uh, to the city solicitor, I thought it was going to be a taking. I thought that it's was. It's an order taking, but it's an easement. It's an order taking because the council's taking it, uh, but it's an easement. That's how hmm. it's described. And, and, and people will be gaining frontage on an accepted city street off an easement? Yes. Hmm. And that's what the city solicitor said. Yes. Would that, that include that us? Think that's that's, that's no. actually that's the question. Well, <laughs> off an easement? I mean, yeah. the roads on it our property would be... Where, where, where the ownership is in the hands of, another, of a third party? I don't think that's conventional. Well, tip, typically, the property owner on each side of the street owns to the middle but it's an exactly. easement for 50 feet or 66 feet. Or I understand whatever. that, but that's not what we're talking about here, is it? Am I correct? This is, this is different. You're correct. You're correct. Different. In this case, the land that the road is on is deeded to a particular individual. And, and um, it's not like an easement for people to use it and then it would revert to the abutters. It, it would revert to the owners. And the owner is the same person. It would be the same. It would not be the abutters. Those if the city discontinued it, they would they, they would lose their frontage, is what I guess I'm, I'm sort of hearing. We don't. We don't really understand. Yeah, it, we it don't. Know. It's, to us. it's one of those new England. That's why we started talking to Ed. Situations, because, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. what is yeah. legal? You know, yeah, it, it, underpinnings I mean, of it all. It's I mean, contrary to what understanding I have, which is admittedly limited, but it involves we, some. You know, uh, what we're currently having is a subdivision process. This isn't a subdivision process. No, but we are accepting a street. That's right, as a public way. Yes. Right. But it goes the public to the way has now. frontage. It does. And the frontage cannot be obtained by the abutters, it's being suggested, because the street is not owned. By the street is privately owned. No, but the the city yeah. solicitor said that it can be obtained by the abutters even. Mm -hmm. Well, to answer your question, yeah, it's private owned. Yeah. Here, it's deeded and pinned all the way down to Clement Street and across and back up the other yeah. side as a parcel of land that's attached to a particular deed. Hmm. And that it's basically it was a right of okay. way originally to use yeah. that that parcel of land that somehow got transferred to us, sort of unfortunately. <laughs> Well, sounds a little gooey to me, and I think it's I think it's it's a kind of thing that we ought to just pause a little bit and 
hear from their their attorney and who are we? Let me see. Is that our last meeting? So someone someone in a position of authority ought to be listening to these to this explanation a little bit more thoroughly so as to make sure that all the abutters are aware of what they're getting or not getting as the case may be. And that's and I'm, and I'm done. <laughs> Jim, did you get your answer? did you get your question said? You said you had a question. No, I don't have any. Okay, Ned, do you have enough information yep, to move on? How, well, how will we be informed at the, uh, what happens? By email or by phone? Email, okay. Thanks, Ned. That would be great. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, Sean. Good night. Appreciate it. Good night. Okay, We're a pretty impotent group right now. You have seen the meeting on Monday with the city councilors. <laughs> what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Okay. It's funny because I'm not really feeling the power either. <laughs> There's a power shift somewhere, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's landing over here. Yeah. Do you think Carrie's coming for sure or not? Well, that raises an important that? question is who deals with claims going forward and I it doesn't sound to me like it ought to be the commission. I, you know, we're, we're sort of feeling yes, our way through this whole thing. So currently the discussion with the mayor's office on it is changing the ordinances that it would go to our insurance carrier, all claims all. automatically. That's the current conversation. He hasn't proposed a change in any ordinance to city council at this point, but that's the conversation that's happened. Well, that could happen anyway, even if we don't have this claims committee meeting. Is and so maybe we should defer Explain. having that, making that decision. Okay. We talking about we're talking streets and sidewalks, that kind of those kind of things. Backups. Um, yeah. Backups. Water, water breaks. Yeah. Damages. It seems expensive. But. And the city is, because uh, the city's over the years gone through periods where they've self-insured and, and and now they're insured through the Massachusetts Municipal Association. That's or correct. So currently, if there's tree damage or there's a pothole, mailboxes, those all go to Maya, the insurance carrier. Yeah. yeah. Versus sewer and water and solid waste claims, which stay with. Board of Public Works. Unless it's over 5,000. That was then automatically yeah, goes to Maya. If it's over 5,000. It's a good thing to lose. I'm sure it's going to be bigger than that. Oh, it was good. We'll table that. Table? Okay. Yes, well, everybody agrees. You just give up the glory. <laughs> yeah. All right. Contract with Ty and Bond for the Warner Street Sewer Replacement Project Engineering Services in the amount of sixty-one thousand two hundred dollars from the Sewer Enterprise Fund. Move approval. Second. I need to recuse myself. I will be Bye -bye. out in the hallway. Don't eat drop. Well, no <laughs> dogs <laughs> allowed. <laughs> you should. So Warner Street. This is the extension of Warner Street. This is the main part. The reason I ask is because I may have to. Be, I built the extension to Warner Street, so I might understand this is not the new end not of Warner Street. Not part of the Baker Hill Road subdivision. Talk. No. We're not. No. Okay. Good. It's a contract to design a sewer replacement in Warner Street. Um, we have information, and David will correct me to the extent that I stumble and trip on any facts. Um, we have. Uh, uh, TV, the existing sewer line, which is an old um, BC pipe, clay pipe. It's uh, broken and collapsed in some areas. Um, so uh, a, a, a good deal of it is really non-serviceable and is in dire need of replacement. Um, it's a project that we don't have time uh, and resources to design in the house. So we sent a request for proposals to a number of, to three firms, four firms, three firms. Um, and requested quotes from those. Um, we received uh, two proposals and one firm did not submit a proposal. Um, the low fee in the proposal was from Time Bond in the amount of $61,200. Um, David and I 
Dave Valletta, who's managing this project, we reviewed the proposals when they came in. And um, the fees uh, for time bond look, look fine. Um, we've worked with them on uh, other um, utility related projects and we found them to be satisfactory. So um, what we're trying to do is have this work designed this winter and have it up to bid um, in the next construction season. And you said there are two other um, uh, respondents? Right, there was one from Stantec and uh, we had requested a proposal from Wooden Car and they didn't submit. Okay. The proposal from Stantec was uh, somewhere in the order of 75, 70, 76. yeah, it was in the mid 70s, I guess, 75, 76,000, <coughs> so quite a bit more. Um, and like I said, we've worked with, with Time Bond on projects like this, and the work has been pretty good. Does this do the whole length from Federal all the way to? to it's from Maplewood Terrace to Federal. Maplewood Terrace? So uh -huh. how is it from Maplewood downhill? How is it? Yeah, is it okay if that part uh, It's No, it's in poor condition at a, a number of different locations, and I think our concern was that we'd be chasing our own tail trying to repair uh, a BC sewer that was put in in the 1890s. Oh, yeah. <coughs> and that it would just be more of a problem to open something up, try to repair it, and then end up chasing it back in certain ways. The concern was that we'd end up replacing a good portion of it through spot repairs and yeah. still not have a decent sewer. Right. So. I might need to recuse myself from this because my property abuts that part of Warner Street. Okay. Your sewer is in good shape. I don't know <laughs> if it connects out to Warner or it connects out to Norwood. You mean you're going to benefit from a free flowing pipe? That sounds like a clear conflict to me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do we have a second on this? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. One extension just for 30. Okay, and one. And Jane and Mike. Okay. Okay, Mike. Hey, Mike. I never talked about anything. You guys just repaid that whole Warner Street like a couple of years ago. It's been longer than that. Might be a couple. Okay, when Immerman's teenager was 14, he broke his arm in front of our house when he came down on a skateboard. How old was he now? I don't know. 30. 30. <laughs> 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 I know that they're quite a bit older than my son who's 20, about to be turned okay, 24. Okay, never mind. Maybe it was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was just yesterday. <laughs> yeah. All right. This gym is issued solid waste enterprise, first quarter of date. So this is coming to you. Uh, Dave Lutt and Deb Leiser did quite a bit of work behind on this. Um, I'd ask Dave to be here tonight also just in case I get something wrong and correct me. But basically we start off with our operations and maintenance, which is the O and M coming down through. Uh, the total budget was two hundred and thirty thousand six hundred dollars and uh, we've expended fifty-six thousand four hundred and forty-six. Um, as you can see, the number of the line items coming down through, we're doing fairly well on. Um, the Chickpea landfill, we're low on. We had a hundred thousand dollars budget, and we're at twenty-one, so we're two or four grand less than what we thought we'd be at this point. Um, trying to see if other ones kind of stick out. The electronics recycling program looks to be almost half the budget, but that's uh, doing uh, the bulky cards also on that, which is for um, uh, appliances furniture, things of that nature. So, so we're getting revenue on that, back that, from that. That's, we're getting revenue down below back on that, just so you're aware of that. Um, we had a disbursement for rain barrels and cost post vendors, but we buy these, we get these back at cost. So we're, even though we spend money, it's coming back under the revenue side. Um, other notable things that stick out um, is we have Zero on the 5000 for printing and mailing. In May of 2015, we'll order a uh, permit for vehicles again. So we'll have uh, probably a good three or $4,000 bill next May coming on that. So even though you see nothing now, will come at a later point in the fiscal year. Um, and coming down through, we have bags that are going to last us through the fiscal year. Even though we spend 16000 of the 33, we are probably not going to see it go into FY, until FY15. Uh, 16, excuse me, on that. 
Come down through the capital side, we've hardly expended anything on that. Uh, we have a couple of major line items for a new truck. Uh, we decided to delay that purchase based on what the outcome of the solid waste division is going to be and the, and the transfer stations. Uh, we're spending some nominal amount on the reuse shed for capital yes, David. I just had a question on the capital thing. What would a what kind of a figure would represent an an ongoing regular allocation of capital if we stay in the business for the next ten years? For a truck? For for the whatever is all of this equipment. Well we were doing twenty five thousand dollars a year for the past seven years for the truck and we we're encumbering it every year. And I figured this truck had between a seven and a ten year life cycle to it. I just want to make sure we have the funds in advance. So we've been doing that for the past number of years, encumbering that money. Right. That's why you see there's a total of 125,000, and then 75,000, which came from um, came from the state, so yeah. salt, the salt shed that we didn't purchase for next door <coughs> at the Mass Dot Yard. So we have about 200,000 set aside for a new roll-off truck, if needed, which is plenty of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Days in the process of getting pricing on a. Uh, roll-off container, 40-yard box, that'll probably run $8,000 of that $25,000 line item. We have one that's on its um, last legs, per se. It's kind of rusted through and falling apart. Um, these are actual under personnel. These are the actuals that we've incurred to date so far. We're a little below, but not far. We're pr pretty much on track with that number as far as the quarter goes. Uh, the next two, next three, we've assumed that we've gone through 25% because those are the actuals for the 100% for the year. So we've assumed that those have disappeared at this point when you're doing the accounting. And then we get down to our revenue side where we have um, the stickers. You can see the stickers were quite a bit ahead for a quarter at 70000 we are pretty much done the sales of our residential vehicle permits. The big push starts in June and ends usually in September to October. So we might see a couple more hundred during the course of the year being sold as new people join or new residents come into Northampton. So, but we will see it as a tick up in June next year when we start selling the tickers the stickers again. So you're going to see this number probably hover for the next quarter analysis that we do. It would probably go up just a little bit. It probably lay flat pretty much for the third quarter. And fourth quarter, you might see it tick up a little bit because we start selling new permits again. Do you think we'll get to the 110 or near it for the full year? No. It doesn't look like it. <coughs> I mean, it my, my estimate is we'll get to about $80,000. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have about $7,000 after the first of the year for private hauler permits. And then because we start selling stickers in June, uh, we'll have some of the FY16 stickers <coughs> will come in um, in June of this year before the end of the fiscal year, so that'll bring it up uh, as well. So my guess is the total will be up in the eighty to eighty-five thousand dollars for the whole year. And Dave, do you, is the can you remember off the top of your head what percentage of the cost last year to this date had occurred? I can't really remember. I mean, I, I know that, that we've seen declining vehicle permit stickers mm -hmm. over the years. So in, in calendar year 12, we had about 4,000 vehicle stickers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and calendar year 13, we had uh, 3,375. So it seems like we're leveling off by the mm -hmm. time we get the trickle through stickers during the year and then the early stickers in June, I would imagine that we're going to be back up around the 3,300. So it mm -hmm. seems to be fairly stable at that that level. We have 3,000 permits right now. 3,000 permits. <coughs> they must have budgeted based on thinking would have this about the same amount of customers. Yeah. Is that what we're so how, how do we end up losing 30 grand <coughs> if we had the same amount of customers? You mean the same budget 110? Yes. Yeah. Because the amount that you anticipate in the next um, eight to nine months is probably not going to be 30,000. Right. No. <coughs> I'm not sure what the answer is to that, but we can look into it. Next one down, the MRF revenues are declining, just so you see that. Um, um, during the process of changing out in another two years, I think, looking at going to single stream and paying little to no revenues going forward also. <coughs> so. 
Um, this is based on what we thought we would be getting from the recycling market, but it's not there. Actually, Ned, it looks like if we if we brought in ten thousand, we'd be bringing in forty thousand for the whole year. <coughs> well, it doesn't work that way, right. like because things come in slugs, and, and they come in well, they they come in different. They don't come in on a monthly basis. We don't get paid for it. Right. <coughs> Six month check. And and this the ten thousand may actually include. Um, some payment from the last fiscal year that didn't come in until July 15th. Okay. But we're stuck with accounting for it on mm -hmm. a fiscal year basis. Okay. Yep. But, yeah. but, but it'll be somewhere around 20. Well, I guess. Don't really don't know. know. Okay. Right. I'll stop that. Scrap metal's down. It takes a while to fill up the container. I'm not sure. <clears throat> did one of the loads that, you know, I, I don't know what happened there, but we have estimated 20 based on what we're doing. I don't think the price of scrap metal has gone down that much, but that's just a decline in what we have anticipated for a revenue stream. Uh, miscellaneous. Okay. It's just, <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure what that includes, to tell you the truth. It's all the little things that we get money for it, but don't go into a specific category. Okay. Tips. Tips. Selling tips. 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 Yeah, tips. <laughs> tips. <laughs> selling paper bags on the side. Um, bag sales are doing well. They're above what we're anticipating. If you just start taking the 180 <coughs> split it from the floor, it's, we're doing better than we anticipated on bag sales. Um, trash bin sales, these are the blue bins, compost, the rain barrels. This is the revenue received for up above in the O and M, where we've paid out eighteen twenty for rain barrel and composter, and the residents are reimbursing that. Mm -hmm. And then we got the food waste fees from uh, uh, Peta people. Um, uh, they they sent up their customer base with our vehicle permit fees. We actually include it as part of the fee. Uh, with the Peta people, they have to join their families up. Um, and lastly, it's the cell tower lease. Um, we typically see $68,000 or $70,000 a year out of that lease at the landfill. That lease continues to 2020 at this point. Is this one you see MRSCO checks? I think no. they're bad MRSCO <coughs> The MRSCO checks are in the solid waste. No Go to the landfill no um, so when you get down below here and look at the profit losses, you can see we anticipated a loss of about $125,000 this, uh, this fiscal year. And right now we seem to be about $53,000 in positive. Um, but that money doesn't include the, the 124 doesn't include the capital item up above of the two hundred dollars or $239,000. So it, it seems like we're doing okay. Um, I think next quarter we'll have a better understanding of where it's going. Once all the, the sales slow down, we have uh, some more information. I said this is just a three-month snapshot mm -hmm. of the budget. And did we fund the um, solid waste coordinator for full-time or part-time? It's funded full-time, but it's only basically half-time. So there'll be some. There's already savings there. There is, and you've already seen that because the personnel are direct, are the actual costs that we've incurred. Oh, you made no assumptions. Got it. Right. Okay. <coughs> so hopefully I'll be doing this again at the end of January or really February for you again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we want to discuss it here, but Dave and I had some questions about um, uh, fees in terms of um, uh, the reuse center. The stickers. The stickers. Yes. Mm -hmm. so you, do you want to bring it up now because no. it's relevant to budget? It was discussed on an informal basis by the, the working group, which is not a real, not an official committee. It's mm -hmm. a working group. But the, the topic being the, the sticker sticker fee price. Uh, number one, our will the sticker be required? And I assume the answer is, is yes. But they would. And let me just clarify a little bit for the reuse center on Glendale Road. 
that won't right. open until probably March or maybe April. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But um, the, uh, the feeling of the of group was is there should be no sticker fee for, for people who just use the reuse center. Uh, I, I doubt that's a realistic approach to it. But, but, that's, but there was a further discussion that there had been in the past a $10 sticker fee for, I, I don't know the circumstances for that, but, but and, and then the other possibilities of 25, which they would prefer not to have because they would like to encourage the use, the reuse of the facility. But uh, so the, the, the consensus was that they would be happy with the $10 fee. Now, not that they're a decision making body, but that that's their opinion on the sticker price. But current fees for stickers are. 25, 25. and the second right. vehicle is five. Right. So, right. so the issue is, wh what is the pleasure of the board in terms of stickers for people who use the center on Lendell Road? But we don't need to have an answer today. Uh, no, and, and, I'm just and the you know, official committee will probably discuss it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. But they would they had sort of asked what the board was thinking before we had a right. meeting for tomorrow. At one point, did we have stickers just to use the recycling aspect of the facility? We did. I think there were five or ten dollars stickers a few years ago just well, we to don't, recycle. We don't do that. Anymore. I don't believe so. So there is a, a little uh, precedent. Uh, yeah. Right. The other thing too, there is a fee. You know, there is a cost associated with running that facility, even though it's volunteers. Solid waste division is paying for electricity. We pay for insurance on the property. The gatekeepers are there. They're going to give some directional input. We plow the site. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of maintenance activities also associated with that. The gatekeepers are a key part of the function because th that they're the people who deal with the public coming in the door. The rubber hits the road. <laughs> and they're very cooperative. They have a very positive attitude towards it. They're, they're a key to it. So then the question is then if you're going to open up and have a permit fee, is it going to be applied yeah. across for all our transfer stations for someone to use from East Hampton, South Hampton, Williamsburg, or so on, and have use of the reuse center also if they want it. Exactly the point. But whether or not we have to make that decision now, ultimately um, a decision will have to be made. But now that will be in your jurisdiction, is that correct? It would, but I'd look, love to have some recommendations. <laughs> well, I think the paper was <laughs> passing along the recommendations of a $10 sticker mm -hmm. fee. Or that if we That's can have a special yeah, category. So this would be for people who have no intention of buying bags and That's disposing right. of trash. That's right. Or getting rid of bulky items such as furniture, TVs, right. so on and so right. forth. Yeah, my own opinion is we ought to stick to the 25 and give them availability to the whole resource pool. So you're saying people from outside of the city? And, and, and that, but that's another question, but I do agree with that also. That, that we should open it up to, we're open for business. And the, the more customers we have, the better our economics work. Right. It goes along with the ESCO, we have the reuse events coming up that are not just community-wide, they're, I shouldn't say they're regional, but someone from Southampton could come up here and take partake in the uh, Christmas toy swap. Right. We don't have any limits for that. We don't right. ask where people yeah. are coming from. But there is a cost incurred by the solid waste to do that activity. And, right, including salaries. If we undercut the fees in the other towns, then we're undercutting their ability to support their own programs mm -hmm. because we have the cheapest fee around. Is that the bottle bill argument? Oh, sorry. <laughs> but that's the flip side that was discussed prior. I mean, I think Williamsburg is $100, West Hampton $60 for mm -hmm. a permit. Valley recycling is free. The electrician was um, doing some electrical work today, starting okay. starting today, and the, uh, the Jonesy is standing by to do the framing around the walls, the north wall and the east wall. Um, 
in the door hardware is going to be replaced. The, all, the, all the panels, the structure of the door will be re reused, but the hardware is going to be replaced. And, and there's a date, uh, I don't know what it is, but when the door will be installed, the big overhead yep. door. So it's coming along, slowly but surely. We're going to beat winter. <laughs> Well, it'll be closed change. anyway. I don't know. We're going to be winter yet. We probably won't open. <coughs> no, no way. Doesn't the winter start tomorrow or Friday? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Friday. Okay. Um, are we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. All right. Uh, reserve for topics that the. Um, Chair did not reasonably anticipate would be discussed. Proposed roadway layout for Bonds Road. We've already discussed that. Clement Street Bridge proposal from GPI. So in your package tonight, you'll mm -hmm. see a letter of proposal from Dean Pedersen regarding Clement Street Bridge. Terry Point and I met with the uh, Bay State Village Association that was interested in rehabilitating Clement Street Bridge a couple weeks ago. And one of the things that came out of that meeting was to get a proposal from Greenman Pedersen as to looking at the bridge and come up with basically uh, an assessment report as to options for going forward in the future to start. Terry was hoping this was going to be a $10,000 to $15,000 report. Uh, we have $50,000 from capital improvements for FY15 to start looking at the bridge to decide uh, which way we should go with it. So um, I haven't reviewed this in depth at all, and, but I wanted to get it to you for your thoughts and comments. But uh, Greenman Pedersen came in with an estimated cost of $34,000 for this report, which was a good twice as much as we anticipated originally. Uh, the last report they did was um, in 2007, and I believe it was in the cost of $8,000 or so for the original report. So they have a history with this bridge? They have a history with this bridge for quite a period of time, yes. So you think it would be to our advantage to use them again, given the history, wouldn't it? I would say yes. And wouldn't it, advantage. But you'd also expect that maybe to be reflected in the <laughs> price somehow. Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way we vote. So anyways, I'm just looking to put your comments into it. Um, that I realize it's going to be my decision moving forward in the near future. How dangerous is the bridge? And um, <laughs> let's put it this way. It's, it's posted. The, the ratings were lowered in the past year. Uh, two tons for two, two axle vehicles and one ton for tractor trailer trucks. So it, it was this nominal decrease, but it did decrease. The bridge is on a six months inspe inspection schedule right now instead of every two years. Mm -hmm. So the state is up that inspection because of the deficiencies found. Okay. So, and because someone's bound to ask you, and we did the bridge five years ago? Um, I think it was six or seven. We put a nominal amount of repairs in to open it again. I think we put about $80,000 into it. <coughs> Is there any estimate of what it's going to cost this time? To Not yet. Several hundred thousand at least. Yes. So what will be, physically, what will be the difference in that bridge, other than from a structural standpoint being more sturdy, obviously? What, uh, is it going to be, uh, we expected that bridge to be wider? No. Okay. So no, unless it was a replacement So we, we put a Band-Aid, an $80,000 Band-Aid on the bridge mm -hmm. uh, six years ago? Yeah. But at the time we were talking about it, it seems like I recall that there was a strong feeling to reduce um, the size of trucks going over that, but then we found that the state wouldn't, they you couldn't change that. They have truck exclusion routes, and mm -hmm. it's based on a percentage of 4 to 6 percent of truck traffic going across the bridge. Uh, Alex has collected recent information out there. I haven't seen the data yet, but mm -hmm. the work that was done six years ago by Laura Hansen showed a 1% truck traffic. So as long as there are no posted limits, that's probably not going to fly with the state to make it a truck exclusion rule. Mm. Okay. So if it's a 1% estimate for truck traffic activity, is it 
Um, and isn't it um, truck traffic that is causing the bridge to deteriorate more rapidly? No, not necessarily. Basically, it's um, rusting from you know, exposure to the elements. Um, the cord trusses are rotting through. They're losing, actually, um, section loss on them. It might be reduced by, if, if it was an inch thick, it might be down to uh, three quarters or a half inch thick now, where it's just rusted away. Yeah. And that's what the fix was last time, was taking care of these um, I-cords that had uh, substantial section loss on them. And it's, uh, I think it was two or three cords that were done. Gary, you have any comments? Oh, well, only that the, I mean, there was, I was at the meeting. It was, it was a good meeting. Um, there was probably 20 people there or so, and um, I think there was a pretty strong sense from the neighbors that were there that they really want to see the, the bridge preserved um, for the long term. And um, they also are hoping that that long term view would mean to a lot more time, I think, to raise money for, to get money from historic preservation funds. Mm. Because it's, it is listed someplace, and there, there's some some communication back and forth between historic groups and <coughs> the Columbia Street Bridge group. The other thing is that when we talked to Mass out on this bridge, which I thought Terry relayed to you already, was that there's like about 5,000 bridges that need to be repaired, replaced in, in the Commonwealth, and this falls mm -hmm. in like 2,300 of that ranking. So. Uh, from what we were told, it was probably eight to ten years before this bridge would even pop up on the radar screen for replacement or mass stop funding money into it. Yeah. It's, it's a, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a concern that if the bridge fails, the only way to get another bridge is to you'd get a two-lane wide bridge and it would be a very big project. Um, the grades are such that, you know, it's very steep on the other side and to do it properly you'd have to really change grades and there's a lot of concern about that. People want a bridge, but they don't want the volume of traffic to increase. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a so the, the answer I think is to I think the answer that they believe is the right answer is to um, keep it a single lane bridge, and they really like the historic nature. So I think well, that's really what's coming from that the bridge group. Dales, we can move up on the list. <laughs> that won't help. Huh? Hmm. Yeah. Surprised. So it will just continue to deteriorate, and then someday they'll say, okay, it's closed. closed. Unless we find money and bring it back up to a certain standard again, and then put maintenance money into it on a regular basis going forward. Because this is the same thing that happened for the repairs seven years ago, just in different locations now. It's the same activity. I think an important part of this that they didn't address in the scope is where the money is going to come from. Because it's likely to become a money pit. Mm -hmm. And if a lot of that money is local money, then the city will want to know that that's the case. Yeah. And if there's a way to get the state to do something with it, then that would be an important thing. And hopefully the idea of waiting a long time to raise money doesn't really mesh with the reality of a bridge that's rusting through. I think the thought is that it's not so much raising money, but finding finding funding sources, which I think that I believe what the group believes is out there is historic preservation money. I it think that's what they were thinking. It will help to get all the listings, I think, and that's what yeah. NASDAQ told us in the meeting, right? That right. It may help. What it would help possibly is getting NASDAQ, if they work with the city on it, to look at restoration um, in a better light than replacement, right? If it's right. historic, they said that it will try to honor the historic nature of right. the bridge. You know, that, that would carry more weight if it was had all the historic <laughs> That's what they said. Anyway. They did say that. Just out of curiosity, do you remember the the Kennedy Road bridge that was done within <coughs> the last several years? Mm -hmm. What the cost of that one? That was eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah, that was two lanes, but on your <coughs> structures, it was a very short span. Yeah, mm -hmm. eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Is, it, is the is the is the group that you're referring to uh, the neighborhood group expecting that 
any significant money can realistically be raised toward addressing a, a cost that, that would be anywhere in the vicinity of, of well, that? I think, I think Jim pointed it out a little bit better than I did, is that the idea is that once you get it recognized as, as a historic piece of infrastructure that the state would pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, funny more, more likely to. But they, but like Terry was saying, well, you guys weren't at that meeting, but the state is saying that maybe 10 years before they can even look at this bridge, no matter no matter what gets done with it. Right. And I think to get from today to 10 years out, there's some amount of investment that may be several hundred thousand dollars right. just to get 10 years. You want to get 10 years out of that bridge. It might be several hundred thousand to get to 10 years. Just 10 right. years. Right. I thought you were referring to CPA money. I'm sorry. That's what I thought. Um, you said right. I don't. It could be, right? Well, I, I think so. Yeah, I think that's sure. part of the plan. Uh, it's significant, though, but they're going to be able to contribute against any cost related to what you just suggested. Right. So it's interesting. We have two of these bridges in the city that we're worried about the hotel bridge in Leeds and this one. In the would likely be competing for the same kinds of mm -hmm. funding. Right. Um, it, it seems to me we need something like this to go forward. Yeah, the people are going to want to know about the costs for options. Mm -hmm. And and do we spend $200,000 for 10 years when it costs so much to get a permanent replacement? And um, it's hard to tell whether this scope and price is is right because they really haven't given us much to haven't given us much to go by. I mean, you look at the breakdown of hours, and they just. I, I guess I'm not shocked by the price. Um, uh, I, I don't. I suspect that that this work is unique. That co engineering companies haven't done five of these, and and so they have all the answers in the back of their head, and they mm -hmm. can just give them to us. I think they've got some work to do to get here. Whether it's thirty-four thousand dollars worth of work, I don't know. But, um, it's hard to it's hard to make that decision, but I do think we need this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I every discussion is going to end up with just wanting these answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we received CPA money for um, Hotel Bridge, approximately three years ago, thirty-five thousand dollars for a preliminary uh, engineering assessment. 3500 35000 35, And we expended all of it except for we have one public meeting left to go on that. The report's complete, but they did a structural analysis of the bridge also mm -hmm. for loading capacities. This doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. This is more of a you know, A lot of time spent out in the field and assessing the bridge and coming up with a list of recommendations to be done on it. So I was only responding to your surprise at the 8000 versus 34000 and asking the question. I mean, that's what, that's what precipitated my question. I mean, and, and, and to, to Mike's point, I think, you know, I don't know what, whether it's a good um, estimate or not, or, and I can't tell by reading anything other than what's on the paper. But it, it does seem to me that if we're talking about a bridge that is deteriorating, basically because of some of the same things that were found to be sources of deterioration six years ago, <coughs> and they're the group that studied it six years ago, that they had to have some idea as to what that's going to cost. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, this is going to be your decision again. Here we are. This is so much of a waste of time at this point. Yeah. But, uh, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it just, I mean, it just makes me scratch my head a little bit. Just is a relative comparison, that's all, you know. But this is under a certain amount, so that you can just, it's a sole source because it's under a certain amount. It's engineering. It's engineering. So couldn't you go back and negotiate with them, saying, yeah. we would like blah, blah, blah. Scope of be renegotiated, the price can be. Right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not blown away by the fee. I mm -hmm. saw the fee, I wasn't horrified by that. Mm -hmm. But the scope is not, not exactly clear and, and, and detailed. Mm -hmm. um, to me, one of the purposes of the study is to have a roadmap and a strategy about what to do. Mm -hmm. And the way they've written the report and the deliverable, we're not getting that. Right. And the way I just described it is, we have a bridge that 
is in such poor condition it's being inspected by the state every six months. Mm -hmm. And we know that the state has told us that they probably wouldn't be able to look at even considering doing any providing any funding for this for 10 years. So to me, you start to identify this roadmap. Well, nobody wants the bridge to close, so what do we need to do to get the bridge to be safe for 10 years? And then what do we need to do at year 10 or whatever to get MassDOT back into the loop? So there's references in this document about doing this evaluation in accordance with the bridge manual and the mm -hmm. procedures, because ultimately what we'd like to do is to try to transition the bridge back into the MassDOT system to try to get money from that. Mm -hmm. Because this bridge is just going to be, you know, it's a very expensive thing to deal with. But it sounds like to me you can go back and ask, you can negotiate specific criteria of what you want, like, like you just said. Right. Uh, Pat and then David. A more stupid question and I'm done. The, um, so, understanding that the bridge has been continually deteriorating. Why, why didn't we start this process where the state has a 10-year uh, list of bridges that need to be repaired six years ago when we had the problem and spent $80,000 rather than spending that $80,000 then? I mean, I'm just curious. So this was not on the accelerated bridge program? They came out and looked at it to see if it could be included back in 2008, I think it was, they looked at it, and it wasn't. And it was a limited pot of money for that that program, which ended, I think, in, in fiscal year 16. Hmm. I don't know. Bridges are a source of concern all across the state for everybody. Mm -hmm. and I know that the, this is not, the, obviously, anything that's, that's unique. And we have to deal with it, we have to deal with it. but. Uh, uh, just odd. Did you have something? Uh, no, but it, except, is there any harm in tabling the motion at this time for until the next meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> this is more informational to the board tonight. Not for you to move forward on no action. <laughs> right. This is the kind of thing that we're going to be doing in the future, getting, having all these questions and, and it's still going to be whatever they decide to do anyway. As a resident, did you have any more questions? All right. You're going to send your last contract. Huh? Oh. Yes. I have like 10 more minutes. Yes. Okay, well, I think could, we're done. Well, no, no, no. Administrative board. well, I wondered if we could jump Oh, meeting ahead. schedule for November and December? Yeah, that too. Take it out of order? Yes, please. Okay. So basically, on November 26th, the city has a half day, and also on December 24th is Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. So we're looking as to what would be your pleasure for a public works commission meeting um, in either month. Comments? Well, it sort of raises the question about how frequently we think we'll need to meet, mm -hmm. you know, um, and whether once a month is, is going to be adequate. And that, I mean, we need staffs, okay. our bosses' input on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking maybe for November and December that might work. Yeah. So, like, what are you saying in terms of, like, December 10th? Or a regularly scheduled meeting in December. December yeah. Okay. Gary, did you have comments? Uh, no, we're just talking about having a meeting in one in November and one in December, and just picking a date. Uh, well, this is November. Is this I'm sorry, one in December and one in January? Okay. You said two, days, two months, right? right? Well, he's just talking about the fact that it was the eve of Thanksgiving. That's usually um, our next meeting. Yeah. We don't usually have that meeting. So, so December 10th might be the only meeting that we have when we become a commission. Right. Until January. And we might have more things to talk about in terms of frequency of meetings on the 10th of December. Is that what I'm hearing? So we're talking about just meeting on the 10th of December and on that meeting and deciding what we're going to do after that. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Good idea to meet on the 10th? Okay. I think so. All I right. Think so, too. so December 10th is our next meeting? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Of course. Would it be possible, do you think, because I'm just more curious than anything else, if you could 
provide us with a framework or some kind of structure as to how you think going forward we might actually operate. Maybe take take, a, take some subjects that we've been used to having on the agenda, indicate which of those we would, would be the kind of things you'd be looking for input on in the future, and just give us a sense of what we're, what we're going to be doing and how we might be doing it. I understand what it's like, what, it's, what we need to do to yeah. advise, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's important, at least from my end of things, to be come informed about what's going on so that's the whole reason I'm here so you know that part to me is is what I want to be able to continue to feel as though I'm benefiting from mm -hmm. and to the extent that we can provide any help to you from an advisory standpoint it would be helpful I think to know just what where you see those areas that we might be able to weigh in on and, and be of some benefit okay we haven't talked about this but I have my own you know, I have my own thoughts about it in terms of the contracts and things. And you won't have to sign contracts anymore, but I find it helpful to talk about contracts, yeah. both in terms of an updating on engineering things that we're doing, but also capital projects and, pro and planning for capital projects. I find those things all very useful. So when I just think in my own mind about the agendas, I see you no longer approving a contract for a chemical, but being able to take that time to work on something else that may be more important. So, I mean, I don't, Ned and I can get together and mm -hmm. put together an outline, but. Yeah, that's all. So, mm -hmm. it, and it's gonna no doubt change as time goes on and there'll be habits that are formed along the way, but uh, I think it'd just be helpful to. Yeah, and I think some of the, the next biggest things coming up is the budget, which we start in January, mm -hmm. and also try to look at long range capital planning for especially wastewater and water is how we're going to make system improvements with the bu budget and the rates that we have right now. Yeah. Those will be some hard decisions to be made, or recommendations yeah. to be made. The other question would be if, um, if, if the time of the day is still appropriate for that kind of, if these meetings are going to be considerably shorter as a result of having less to weigh in on, on the agenda, then maybe at the start of a different time, earlier or later, I don't know. I know they've been later was that was an issue because you go home and then come back again, but maybe earlier would make some sense if that's not an issue. I, I know. Think. I know when we do the budget exercises, you're usually done from eight to ten in the morning. Mm -hmm. First thing. Good for me. Mm -hmm. Great. Administrative order. Council votes on the twentieth. Okay. We do the second reading. I don't know the outcome, but we have a pretty good guess. <laughs> First reading is the indication. I'd say that it's going to happen. Future reading, do you want to say anything? I don't have anything. Else. Okay. Gary. Um. Last meeting. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I have any. Okay. Pat. Well, I've enjoyed all my years on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Best you can remember. <laughs> I want to thank the board for all the support they've given me over the years. Mm -hmm. Especially <laughs> coming in and signing. It's been a, a true pleasure. Um, we have a great staff here, uh, a great interactive board of public works. Hopefully it, it does continue, maybe not the way it has in the past, but that uh, recommendation insight is always valuable to me. You don't want to sign that. Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm going to see you guys on the 10th, and we have a lot of work to do. So, so, you, know. you better be here and ready to work. I'm Brian. I'm not going to miss discussing the cost of road salt. Yeah, that's no problem. But I, but Sodium I have, hydroxide. <laughs> I am looking forward to sort of a bigger picture discussion about the capital and you know planning, planning, planning to maintain and to sustain our physical plant. David. No. Well. <laughs> it is what it is. Um. You should to see how the ch how the council decides to make. Because they've got some flexibility in using uh, us as well as a as a um, adjunct committee to the to the uh, council. I mean, they may decide that's how they want to go. It could actually expand somewhat. Our yeah, I, the only thing I feel, I feel that I would like to 
have the um, the meeting, the joint council, the joint committee keep meeting in some way. I know it's not official, but having that interaction between city council and commission seems important mm -hmm. for communication. That was well. Yeah. As Jim was going to say, that was discussed at our last meeting. Yeah. I think that line of communication is it's more important with yeah. the decision makers. Yeah. You know, I, I, granted, they might want to hear yeah. what we have to say about it, perhaps, yeah. and we might have a representative on it. But yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. it's really over here. That they yeah, do. it's contrary to what the charter, what the form of the charter suggests. I mean, just what you're asking. I mean, it isn't that I mean, it's supposed to eliminate the need for that and to draw the lines of responsibility administratively, executive branch and mm -hmm. legislative branch so mm -hmm. I think that if we if you really look at it in its purest sense I think that's probably completely contrary to what they're, yeah, the right. direction that they're heading. Mm -hmm. but that information sharing is so important yeah. in terms of creating affinity you know. and getting things past the city council. I think so. it's going to be the important part is the one that Terry mentioned right off the bat and he's right is is hoping that the council is as well informed on the issues on which they're going to have to vote as um, you'd like them to be. Yeah, and exactly. it's, it's a, you know, that's not just casting the aspersions, it's just a, it's a practical matter. There's some depth to all this stuff that mm -hmm. needs to be, uh, uh, you know, absorbed fairly quickly when you're only elected for two years and looking over your shoulder to the next election. And, you know, when you've got to be making decisions on rates and things like that, it's going to be, there's going to be some challenges there. Move to adjourn. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone.